Welcome to this video. This video will be about Webpack 2 and the next videos in this series will also be about that and dive deeper into the individual features of Webpack. Now what is Webpack? If you watched any of my other videos on this channel or you watched some front-end development tutorials in general, you probably already used Webpack quite a lot. Because there you rarely just import script files or style files in your HTML file. Instead you use workflows, probably using Webpack, which do a lot of work for you. They bundle all your files together, maybe they even transform them so that you can write your JavaScript code using ES6, the next version of JavaScript, which isn't supported by all browsers, but then is compiled by that workflow, by that tool which is being used to code which runs in a browser. And Webpack is such a tool. One of the most important ones, or probably the most important one you can use right now, the most popular one too. Webpack is a build tool, you could say, but it really does more than just build your code. It manages your code. It really allows you to create awesome web applications, managing all your style and JavaScript files mainly, but not limited to that. So that is Webpack. Now, why would you want to use it? Let's have a look at a little example project I created. You can find it in a branch in the GitHub repository, which is linked in the video description, the first branch there. This is a normal HTML file, not that much content in it. We have a header, a button and a paragraph. And then we're importing two style files and two scripts. We're importing these files from the source folder and then the respective subfolders. That is a normal project and it's not using Webpack or any other build tool at all. Therefore, what we can simply do is we can reveal this file in the finder and simply double click on it to load it. This will open it in the browser and that is rarely how you open your projects, but it works here. And as you can see, I can now click my button here and show and hide the paragraph. Now, one important thing to realize here is that we're using the file protocol, not HTTP. And that is something I will come back to in a later video in this series. For now, it's okay though. And again, that I'm importing all these scripts by hand. And if we have a look at these script files here, for example, well, what I do here is, here in the app.js file, I access my button, add an event listener, then I call a method here, a function, which simply updates the paragraph, so shows it or hides it, depending on this Boolean variable we set up up there. And then we also got this function, which we attach to the event listener, which toggles or changes this variable from true to false and the other way around, and which then calls these update functions, which update the DOM in the end, which um, change the content of the button, the text content, and decide whether the paragraph is displayed or not. And these buttons, or this button and the paragraph, I don't get access to them in this file. I do that in the DOM loader.js file. All I do here is I assign them uh, to these variables and I get access to them with the document query selector method, a normal JavaScript method. And therefore the import order is important. In the index.html file, I first import my DOM loader, which accesses the elements in the DOM and stores them in variables, and then the app.js file. And if we switch that order, well, we can simply go back to the page, reload it, and you now already see that you can see the paragraph all the time. And if we open the console, we see we got an error that secret button is not defined. And if I click the button, nothing happens here. Our script is broken. And that of course is the case because we switched the order here. And therefore, since we load the app.js file first, we try to access the secret button, which is a variable which doesn't exist yet because that gets defined in the DOM loader, which gets loaded second. That already shows you why you might want to use a tool like Webpack, which manages all your files for you. Now, of course, in this simple app, there is no reason to do so. You could simply put all the code into one single file, right? You could put the app.js file or the code in this file and the code in the DOM loader all into one JavaScript file and load that single file. And that would be absolutely fine. But of course, that's only fine for a very simple application like this one. You don't have to build a very big application to quickly have much more code. And then you either have one file with tons of code inside of it, which gets hard to maintain and manage, 
or you have multiple files and you have to watch out that you import them in the correct order and that you don't forget an import here. The same of course for your CSS files. There you also may have a main file and then you have a file which specializes on some things, on styling certain elements and maybe you want to use the cascading nature of CSS and even overwrite other styles. And then you also have to keep in mind to use the right order. So all in all, this really works only in very small applications and quickly gets hard to maintain and manage. And that is where Webpack helps you. Additionally, we're not minifying our code here. Now again, for this very simple application that doesn't really matter, but if you have more code, you really want to optimize that code. You want to minify it. And of course you don't do that by hand. You will use a tool which does that. And here again, Webpack offers such a functionality. Webpack helps you with that. So let's quickly improve our app here by adding Webpack and using some of its very basic functionalities. Now to get Webpack, the easiest and most common way of doing so is to use NPM, Nodes Package Manager. Now for that, you will need Node.js installed on your machine. And whilst we won't write any Node.js code here, no worries, we simply use that because NPM, Nodes Package Manager, is the de facto package manager for front-end web development and for managing all your dependencies. And Webpack will be such a dependency because that is a JavaScript library, a package, we will use. So make sure to download the latest version here and that of course may have a higher number at the point of time you're accessing this and install Node.js on your system. Once you did this, you can go back to your project and there open up a terminal or command line window. I simply use the one integrated into my IDE and make sure to navigate into that project folder. And here, what you can do is you can simply run npm init. You first need to initialize this project, you need to initialize it and tell npm that npm should manage this folder. After hitting enter, you're presented with a couple of questions. You can basically hit enter on all of them here. The defaults are fine for now. Of course, feel free to fine tune them. Now, after you did this, you should have a package.json file here, which basically keeps track of your project. It allows npm to manage it. Well, let's do something with npm. Let's use the npm command again, still in this project folder in the terminal here. And then we can run install to install a new dependency. And the dependency we want to use here is Webpack, of course. Make sure to add save dev, dash dash save dev, to indicate that this is a development only dependency. So we won't need it for production. Webpack is simply a tool we use during development. Now, if we hit enter, npm will download this um, package for us and we'll create a new node modules folder in this project. We will see it in a second. In this folder, it will store all the packages we added. So here, if we have a look, you see a lot of packages were added because Webpack has a lot of dependencies. And if we search for it, whoops, Webpack simply is one of these uh, folders, one of these projects here. So that is how we add Webpack. Now we can already use it in our project. The easiest way of using it is to go to the package.json file where you see that Webpack was added as a dependency and add a little script. We can name it build, any name you like here in the scripts object. Make sure to wrap it with double quotation marks since we're writing JSON code here. Now then also between double quotation marks as a value for this property here, you define the script and the script simply is Webpack. This will target this Webpack package we downloaded and you can't access it like this directly from the command line, which is why I will create a little script for it. Accessing it from the command line would be more difficult. You would have to dive into the node modules folder and so on. So Webpack and then the most basic form of using it. And we will see how to write a configuration file and so on in the next videos. The most basic form is to then define the entry point, which could be our source JavaScript folder. So here, we could simply enter source, JavaScript, and then app.js, like this. This will tell Webpack, this is the file where you should start your journey. I will explain what this means in a second. Then you also define the output file. Let's say we want to create a new folder, dist for distribution, and there we want to create a bundle.js file. This is our script defined. 
with that script defined, we have to adjust our app.js code. Because as I said, Webpack will start its journey here. And what do I mean with that? Here, we have to basically give Webpack a clue about what this file, app.js file, depends on. And this is how Webpack will then work. In each file, you tell it, hey, which dependencies does this file have? And Webpack works its way up, starting at the file you specify as a starting point, app.js in this case, and then working its way through all the imports this file has, and then the imports of the imports and so on to finally know which files do you use, which features of these files do you use, and then it will merge all that code into one bundle. Well, let's see it in action. So first of all, we need to import our DOM loader here. So here, we now simply add an import and we want to point to the DOM loader file. Now importing it like this won't do the trick though. We also now have to specify what we want to import from this file. We have to tell Webpack what that is. To be able to import something from this file, we have to go to the file first and export something there. So simply place export in front of the variable, the function, whatever it is, you want to make available outside of this file. Now as a side note, you might recognize that this is ES6 syntax, and it is, but you still will run your code as ES5 and you can't use other ES6 features. It's only that import and export syntax, which is detected by Webpack and then used correctly. So don't think that you can write ES6 code now. We would have to add a certain additional package to be able to do so. And we will see this later in this series and other videos. For now, it's only that export and import syntax we can use. So we export both variables. So with being called braces using this ES6 import syntax, we can now reference the secret paragraph and the secret button of both variables we then use in this app.js file. With that, we can simply run npm run build, our script we created here, and hit enter and we should see that Webpack successfully created a bundle for us. We can see it in the disk folder, this bundle file, which includes a lot of code Webpack added for us, but most importantly, it should work. So let's now add this to our index.html file. I'll comment out the two other imports and simply add a new one where I then point to the dist folder and here the bundle.js file we just created. And with that, let's simply reload our app here. And this looks pretty good since we don't see an error. And you see the button also still works. So we got the same functionality as in the start of this app, but we only have one import now and this gets managed by Webpack. And if we add more JavaScript files and import them in the app.js file, Webpack will automatically add them to the bundle and manage it for us. And as I mentioned, that is super important. And another great feature Webpack offers is you can also minify the code. So before we conclude the video, let's do that. Let's add another script, which we maybe name build colon broad. Of course, the name is up to you. And then you can simply copy the command from the build process, but you also add minus p here or dash p at the end after Webpack basically. This will run it in production mode, which simply changes some things Webpack does. One of the most important things is that Webpack will now automatically minify your code. We can see this by running npm run build prod. If we run this, you see a new bundle was created. If you access this, this looks much more compressed, smaller. If we reload the application, it still works, but now we're using this smaller code. As you can see, if you visit the sources folder, this bundle chairs, here you also see that minified code, which of course is smaller and therefore is downloaded faster. Something you will really only see if you're using the HTTP protocol, which we aren't right now. So in the next series, in the next video of the series, we'll have a look at how we can use the Webpack development server to host our app on a little dummy development server to simulate that it is on a real server, which you can only simulate if you use the HTTP protocol and not the file protocol, which doesn't offer the same features. And thereafter, we'll dive deeper into Webpack and its core features.